Uh, I'm gonna be out here. Huh? I'll be here, so we're gonna be ready. Oh, we're we'll 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 gonna be like five, ten minutes. Thank you. These guys, we meet again. We do. <laughs> years later, huh? 12, 12 years. Know, Let's get the rematch one, come on. The rematch, I think he's out of my weight class now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I got into, I have a couple of gyms in, in my hometown and um, I do, I start doing powerlifting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like, it's like wiping your ass before you shit, it makes no sense. <laughs> Being a boxer with all the, you know, arthritis and elbows, hands. And I go into powerlifting, but it's fun, man. I gotta, it's something different to concentrate on as well. It keeps you active, yeah. Kelly, what are your memories of fighting this man? Because you, we've just been checking the record books. You've come back off two brilliant wins over Jermaine Taylor. Gary was telling me he didn't think you'd want to fight him because he didn't think he'd be a big enough name for you at the time. No, well, I seen the fight, and in all honesty, um, he, his record was uh, a good one at the time. I think he had one. One loss, uh, or 29 or and one. 29, 29 and, one. and one. Fantastic record. Um, you know uh, his trainer, and that was one of the biggest things I remember about the fight was the trainers. You know, with um, Enzo and, and Jack Lowe, it was like they wanted to get some of that media attention too, and they were going at it a little bit. I remember um, words back and forth, and, and uh, Gary's the type of guy who I knew was cool and, and to himself. He wasn't a showboat or a guy that was going to run the mouth to get my attention. And everybody knew my style too. I was the same way, like quiet, come to the fight and do what I had to do. And I, I think that's what it was. Um, and it was a big fight, you know. And I did come out two tough fights with Taylor. And it was nothing, I never looked past any of my opponents. I've watched actually more film on Gary than I had to on Edison Miranda, Jermaine Taylor, Hopkins. Um, because you want to go in there and that's the fight you want to form. And you get a guy who was coming from a different country who was trying to make a name. And that was a big fucking opportunity for Gary. Those are the most dangerous guys, you know, so you gotta go into the fights at your best. Gary, do you wanna tell Kelly your reaction when you found out that you'd got the fight with him? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've told the story. I did a, a Q&A the other day, and um, basically we thought that, you know, Kelly was, he was WB, WBC, WBO, Rig Magazine champion, and um, we didn't think the fight with me was, was gonna be big enough for him. And um, now I was number one in the WBO rankings and a guy called Sebastian Zibik was number two. So, you know, we were gearing up for the vacant title fight, which we thought Frank Warren would have won the purse bids for. So I was confident, you know, I was gonna be WBO champion. And I was very confident in that. And um, one morning I was, I was my, my son was a baby at the time, so I think I was feeding him. And, uh, Dean Powell phone, God rest his soul, he's dead now, Dean. Um, he said, Gary, are you sat down? And I said, yeah. He said, we've made the, we've made the Pavlik fight. I pulled the phone away from my face. I went, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the, the Zibic fight is a fight that I thought, you know, look, with home advantage, I thought I could have won. I thought I would have stopped him. But Kelly was a whole different, you know, a whole different uh, thing altogether. You know, I mean, you know, you get all these fighters, I mean, my boy tomorrow, Jay Harris, he gets a WBC title shot. It isn't the task that I had, definitely not. You know, we know the Mexican kid is good, but he's, 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 his feet are all over the place. He's quite poor technically, whereas this guy was an elite class fighter. So that's the reason for the uh, effing and blinding when, when the fight got made. <laughs> I think at the time of the fight, you were rated by a lot of people as maybe number two pound for pound fighter in the world. You were a huge noise. Obviously, I work in Wales, so Joe Calzaghe was kind of my main guy at the time. There's a lot of talk <coughs> the two of you fighting. Did that ever get more than just talk? Of what, me and Joe? You and Joe. I wanted it, um, and I'm going to be dead honest, and I always was with my career. There's a lot of guys that have had a fight. I think Joe was one of the most underrated fighters of all time. Joe was great. Um, look what he did with the guys that he fought. And um, for me, I wanted to fight. Joe like, absolutely I would be crazy not to and, and I understood the fact that he was 168 and I was 160 and that was my weight uh, weight class at that time but you know it just never came to me there was a lot of fights that was never made and usually in boxing I think Gary understands this um it's usually a lot of times the fighter gets blamed for fights you know if a fight don't happen or if yeah. a fight the fighter takes the fight but in all reality I don't know I've been out the game now for you know eight nine years but um, it's usually the, the boss is calling shots and the fighter takes the blame for it. There's so many things that go on behind the They're scenes. Behind there's the egos, scenes. there's egos, there's money, there's promoters that won't work with each other. And, and another thing is, it, and a lot of times when you think, even as a fighter, or even as a, a trainer in a camp, 
that you you're hearing something from the promoters and that's what you think it is, but it's not. Only the people calling the shots know exactly why. And um, you know, with that fight with Kalzagi, it never came to be. And uh, to this day, we don't understand why. And I think I have an idea. I think Top Rank wanted to keep me at middleweight for that period of time. Um, it was I had the advantage with the size and everything else, and moving me up to super middleweight. One of my big key strong points now is you know cutting off. So.